friend and welcome to a review video that looks a little bit different for me. I'm talking about the Sure 50 millimeter Saturn 1.6 lens today. And it's because there's an exciting launch on Indiegogo officially releasing the full set of Saturn lenses that I already started reviewing back in April, I think, with the 35 millimeter. So if you wanna learn about these lenses, definitely go look at the Indiegogo link if you wanna see them all as a set, if you wanna learn all the specs and the details. I'm just gonna be talking through my user experience with the 50 millimeter now. If you wanna watch my 35 millimeter review, you can go see that back on my channel, just go search for it. So the first thing you would notice as soon as you see these lenses is that they are tiny. And in addition to being as small as you can see them, they are equally lightweight, which is an incredible benefit when you're using anamorphic and you're getting a 1.6 stretch ratio. It's just an awesome feature to have, the tiny size that isn't cumbersome like so many other anamorphics, doesn't get in your way, and it offers full frame coverage, which as a Fujifilm shooter isn't necessarily beneficial directly to me because I don't have a full frame body, of course, However, for any full frame shooters out there, it's a huge benefit to have full frame coverage in such a small package. So yes, the small size and lightweight form factor are the first thing I wanna mention. But the next thing of course is also the flares, which are still very tasteful and that's consistent with my 35 millimeter review. I have the neutral flare option here. I personally don't love the blue flare, so the neutral works for me. And it's just so nice to have a flare that reflects the shooting conditions, as you can see here, and doesn't force everything into the cinematic sci-fi category with the blue flares. So I love having those. The flares are nice, but they're not overwhelming. The only thing that I will say is every now and then, if you have too much light, just in general, too much light straying into the lens, the flares, not the anamorphic flares, but the flaring on the lens, can become a bit overwhelming. So that's a negative that I want to talk about openly because I, there were a couple of shots that I think would probably push beyond usable because of how intense the general flaring was. Not the anamorphic flare, that's really tasteful. I think they've got that down. But in general, some of the internal flaring gets a little bit crazy if there's just too much light being fed into the lens, which I didn't actually notice as much with the 35 millimeter. And I don't know why that would be, maybe it was just my experience shooting different sorts of things, but yeah, for some reason I did experience a little bit of a different there. So in that way, the two might be different, but the sharpness, they are the same. And that is to say that these are both incredibly sharp lenses. It is really nice when you're shooting anamorphic to have something that's sharp because so often you can start to lose sharpness as soon as you start embracing character in an image. And I'm not saying anamorphic specifically, but as soon as you introduce character into a lens, sometimes with character is going to come a lack of sharpness, but I have not felt that at all on this series. In fact, sometimes it's sharp enough that I'll drop the mid-tone detail in Resolve afterwards, or I'll find a way to soften the image up because I would like to have a little bit more character maybe um, but I would take it on the sharper side and that's, that's where these lean. So that's my preference and it's really nice. The distortion on these is pretty good. I personally am not one who shoots anamorphic so frequently that I'm looking for this perfect barrel distortion versus pin cushion distortion. I personally am not terribly concerned about it and it can be very easily fixed in DaVinci Resolve with just simply changing the direction of the distortion. So I'm not too worried about it. Uh, but if it's something that bothers you, then definitely watch other reviews that address it in more detail. At T2.9, that aperture is more than sufficient for bokeh and depth, especially at a 50 millimeter focal length, which is closer to 35-ish in terms of horizontal field of view. But with this focal length, it's definitely enough at T2.9 to provide some depth, but I still wish that someday anamorphics can find a way to drop the aperture for a little more light collection because these get really hard to use as soon as you're in darker scenarios and settings where you can't control the light and you want to have, be able to shoot with them, but there's just not enough light to shoot at T2.9 unless you start cranking your ISO and then you start introducing noise into the image, which has to be solved later. So 
I would love someday, but that's not a knock on these lenses. T2.9 is more than sufficient when you're surveying the landscape of anamorphic lenses right now. Sorry for the interruption. While I was editing, I realized I need to say three things. And the first is Suray sent me the lens. They're not paying me. They don't get to see it beforehand. And I'm not only saying nice stuff, but I am recording this right now on the Sniper series. And I love these lenses still. The second thing is that I am now a friend of Musicbed. My favorite and I think the best licensing platform available for music. I officially am a friend of theirs, so I'm partnering with them. Uh, you can learn more about them below. If you don't already know, I think they're the best available. So and the last thing is these mics. If my audio sounds good in this video or if it sounds bad, please tell me below seven, seven rhymes or seven rhythms. I'm not sure uh, how to pronounce it, but they sent me these uh, to test and I don't have to make a review or anything, but if you think they're good, let me know because I might make a review. So anyway, back to the video. I will say still like on the 35 millimeter, a big complaint for me is the lack of minimum focusing distance on these at three feet. It is pretty far away. I am okay with it. Uh, with the 50 millimeter, again, it's, it's far less of an issue than with a 35 millimeter. But at three feet, it just doesn't feel like you can get quite close enough to the subject at times where I would like to be able to catch a detail or, or get a certain shot and I just can't do it with a three foot minimum focusing distance. Although I know it could be somewhat quickly solved with a diopter. So if you're someone who is looking to do that, yeah, you could try a diopter as a workaround to get a better minimum focusing distance. I just haven't tried that yet. Now onto the image and the characteristics. I still have the same opinion that I did with the 35 millimeter lens. The image and characteristics is really nice. There is just a little bit of something in there, just maybe a different sort of contrast or saturation that you would get on a typical lens. Of course, the, the bokeh with a 1.6 anamorphic, you can tell that it has a nice oval shaped bokeh. It looks really beautiful. The image coming out of these is sharp but it still has character. And I think that the character is coming by way of the coloration and the contrast that's provided from the lens. Um, in addition, of course, to the flaring. But now for monitoring these, 1.6 uh, at open gate, which is three by two, gives you a 2.4 to one aspect ratio. And I think that that is perfect. And if you wanna shoot in slow motion, on most cameras, you're still in 16 by nine. And then you end up with, I think a 2.66 or 2.8, I can't remember, but you end up with something that can easily be scaled up into the 2.4 aspect ratio. And so honestly, having a 1.6, I think is the sweet spot right now in terms of shooting with digital mirrorless cameras. You'll likely want a monitor for doing that, but honestly, with a three by two open gate recording at 1.6, I have been recording without it. On the 35 millimeter, I actually shot a wedding day without using an external monitor. I just shot it compressed and I was able to use the focusing features on my Fujifilm to be able to nail the focus accurately. And because of how sharp these lenses are, I was able to do it and I felt confident about it. So you might want to use a monitor for it, but if you don't have one, I actually still think that it's pretty accessible to use without. I did not address this in the 35 millimeter video, but now in the 50 millimeter video, I will make note that the focus throughout all of its focus range, the aspect ratio remains consistent, which I think was a problem on their 1.3 series of lenses, but that is resolved here on the 1.6s, the Saturn series, these tiny little guys. Uh, you can focus all the way through the mechanism and never change aspect ratios. So that's pretty much all I have to say for this one. These are a great set of lenses. I think if you're looking to add a set of anamorphics to your bag, it's going to be hard to beat this price point, especially at launch on Indiegogo for the quality of what they're offering. And so with that, if you have any questions, I'm sure there's something I forgot to address. Please leave a comment below. I hope you liked this video. I hope you like me trying something different for the anamorphic review that would fit the style. Um, thanks so much for watching, friend. Peace. Have a good day.